Hello, everybody. I recently rebuilt my old neglected DJI F330 quad. Um, it turned out much better than I had anticipated, and I thought I'd share it with you. Um, I replaced the old DJI stuff with the red can motors, and I had <coughs> purchased some of the 3DR Iris Plus motors on the big recent 3DR sale. Uh, they were $3 a pop. Uh, I mean, what an incredible deal. I thought I'd try them on this frame. I used some HQ 9x5 props, and I reflashed some old uh, ESCs with uh, Simon K firmware and enabled the uh, active braking, the complementary PWM comp underscore PWM enabled, and it's flying uh, amazingly uh, well and responsive. I used uh, this Hobby King Micropilot uh, APM light controller, which I had purchased a while back on sale, and currently it was just on sale for this uh, half off. Now it comes with these long leads that uh, I think are kind of cumbersome. I just used PPM and soldered, uh, removed the servo extensions and soldered it together. Uh, makes it for a much neater uh, fit. This diagram is on Hobby King. It's kind of confusing. Uh, it makes it, says something about channel 5 and PPM. It's very simple. You just uh, jumper channels 2 and 3. And channel one will be your uh, PPM. On the uh, OSD and telemetry, they kind of Y together through one cable. I powered it separately, 5 volts separately, and I did not add any 12 volts to the other side of the board. I made a uh, mount for the flight controller that I cut out of a piece of... Um, Maybe it's G10 or plastic material that I had here. Yeah, it's got some cutouts and things, but it doesn't really make a difference. It's just uh, the right cut out to the right size and added some plastic standoffs. Um, I did not use this um, power distribution current sensor. I used the uh, power distribution board on the uh, inbuilt to the DJI, and I used a regular 3DR current sensor. Uh, for vibration dampening, I glued some of this uh, orange uh, latex foam stuff. This stuff works amazing. Glued that to the bottom of the plastic and then used some double-sided tape to the frame. And uh, if you haven't tried that stuff, you got to buy it. The OSD uh, connected to uh, the FTDI and changed, uh, flashed it with the what I wanted to use on it and to my configuration. On the ground side, I'm using this uh, RFD 900 plus radio um, with its own uh, battery and the BEC. Here I have it mounted on the frame with the antenna oriented like this. I have no problems with range. I've heard some horror stories with others losing link after 25 feet, but I have yet to lose link. Uh, here's what the flight controller looks like mounted in. The OSDs right on the front. Uh, I'm using this X8R radio uh, or receiver just because that's what I had. Yeah, it's a little bit big, but um, I didn't expect a whole lot out of this frame. I thought it'd be kind of fly slow, but it'll be kind of cool to use all the uh, APM stuff and the radio, and it's always kind of fun um, doing autonomous stuff. But uh, as it turns out, this thing has uh, flies unbelievably well. Uh, originally, off of the first uh, flights, uh, I had to tune it down quite a bit because of the oscillations. But this is the maiden flight. Um, all I did before this flight was uh, some hovering and just uh, tuning it down to get the oscillations out. I haven't done a whole lot of tuning, but I got it to where I thought it flew halfway decent and uh, took it out to the field here. Um, 
I did change the screen layout a little bit. Um, I don't like uh, like the alarms are set too low. And, um, for some reason, on the left side of the screen where it shows stabilization mode, that S keeps flashing. I don't know why, but whenever I put anything on that side, in that exact spot, that happens. So I just moved stuff over. Um, return to launch um, was set with the default super slow speed and uh, however everything's was looking pretty good I did notice right away it, everything felt very crisp and responsive and I was pretty impressed um, the I really didn't have too many problems setting anything up um, just everything worked pretty good this is my first APM. I've put together a few Pixhawks, and I thought this uh, did amazingly well for for using the older firmware and uh, older hardware. I think uh, some of the reason that I had a lot of um, the oscillations is enabling that uh, active braking, so it, it needs a little bit different uh, tuning than your standard ESCs. Um, this is my second time up. I decided to see uh, exactly how well it will perform besides just doing the regular loiter and return to launch. Um, you know, this thing right now, we're moving at 52 miles an hour, and I'm not even really trying. It feels very... Lock, pretty locked in. I mean, it could use a little bit more tuning, but I mean, surprisingly fly, flying well. I thought this was going to be more of a slow flyer, uh, not real responsive. I mean, I didn't expect it to fly uh, the way it is now. The wind was a little bit windy, but you know, it was handling the wind very well. We're going uh, against the wind here. I mean, yeah, that speed was I was helped by the wind a little bit, but you know it it'll haul regardless. Um, the only problems I had here is the way I have the OSD set up with my uh, home and return to ho home arrow. It's uh, right now it's in the way. I can't really see where I'm flying with this extreme uh, as I'm pitching more extremely. So I try to yaw it off center a little bit so I can see where I'm going, and uh, I mean. I could be going a lot faster than this, but I mean, this is, you know, the first flight, so I didn't want to push it too much, but really quite a smile on my face. I did not expect it to fly uh, like this, uh, so it, it is a lot of fun. And first time using a mini APM, and I think uh, I'll have to enable acro mode because I should be able to get some even higher speeds out of this. Uh, I mean, in this... Um, in this video, uh, the next day when I adjusted the um, OSD, I think I got 65 miles an hour or something. I'm, it's coming up here shortly. Unfortunately, the day was real overcast, but uh, um, I don't know. I'm probably forgetting something. I'm just trying to whip this together to share it with you guys. And if you guys have any questions on uh, the build or the components. Um, I used uh, a 12-volt regulator, which is a little bit large. I've got a mini one coming to replace that. And 5-volt uh, was coming from these ESCs, or you could use uh, BEC. Just uh, the reason being to keep the OSD and the telemetry radio from having kind of brownouts uh, and functioning uh, better than uh, using the built-in um, from the power module. Um, this is the next day. My OSD, I think, looks a lot better. Um, I tested loiter. Um, I mean, everything works real well. I tested return to launch. Um, I increased the speed on the return to launch. I increased the speed on the navigation um, uh, modes. And... Uh, here I'm going to push it a little harder. The first run here, I think I hit, let's see, 58, 60, 61. 
61 miles an hour. Below the miles per hour is the throttle position. So I wasn't at 100 miles, I mean, 100% uh, throttle. And I think I do one more run. It is really, really cold uh, on this day. I'm at 100% throttle, up to 59, 60, 64, 65, 66. I mean, not bad for a little, for what it is, it was totally unexpected. I w the way it flies, if somebody handed me the controls, uh, I wouldn't have guessed these were like 950 kV motors. Uh, it flies much different. But it's still, you know, not just that it's quick, but it's very precise. It feels pretty locked in, and that's without doing a whole lot of tuning. I think I can get it uh, much better than it is. Anyways, uh, hope you enjoyed this video and my rambling. Uh, any questions, throw them in the comments. And happy flying.